Hi everyone and welcome to the repertory of mental qualities. This is a repertory that I have created together with my good friend Raphael Noy. Over the last six or seven years we've been working on it steadily and slowly and with an emphasis on accuracy. It's a repertory that has helped myself and my students and friends greatly in practice and I'd like to share that with you so that maybe you can find use in it too. In modern homeopathy, many people focus on the mental symptoms and that's partly a result of the world and the culture we live in today. But my feeling and my experience from many cases and many of my students' cases is that the mind is a minefield. It's very easy to make mistakes, to misconstrue rubrics, to choose the not exact rubrics, too small, not accurate, and not necessarily the most important rubric or issue in the case. Or it's possible that the rubric does not contain all the remedies. There are many complications when choosing mind symptoms as opposed to the accurate and solid physical or general symptoms. Nevertheless, that's the culture that we live in today. So, let's see what the difficulties can be in finding the right rubric. For instance, you might have a patient who cares too much about others, worries about others, and is burnt out from looking after them. And this is a very common phenomena, but what rubric do we choose? Because there are many facets to this concept with the patient. For instance, we could take full of cares for others, we could take sympathetic, we could take anxiety for others, we could take anxiety caretaking of others from, or weakness from nursing the sick. Each one of these is a relatively small rubric. We could combine them together, but that is time consuming and not necessarily accurate and does not contain all the facets of this idea. Therefore, I created a meta rubric a quality called carers and helpers. It's a rubric that contains all the possible remedies pertaining to this idea and concept of people who are too caring. Let's take another example. Here we have a patient who loves money, worries about not having any and spends too much. A money oriented materialistic patient. There are many rubrics that fit the bill. For instance, fear of poverty, avarice, ambition increased to make money, extravagance, anxiety about money matters, dreams about money even. So which do we take? And there are many, many, many more. Well, I created one big rubric to contain all the remedies that have anything to do with money in any way or form so that you can easily use this rubric to cover that kind of a patient. Now let's take another example. For instance, a patient who fears snakes, thinks that he sees snakes and dreams about snakes. What will we take here? Fear of snakes, dreams of snakes, delusions of snakes. All those are possible. What about all the snake remedies themselves? They might be part of it and many other snake rubrics in the repertory. Instead, I created one big rubric called snakes that contains anything to do with snakes, including the snake remedies, including even in a very low experimental degrees, plant remedies that relate to snake or have snake in their name, just in case. Okay, here's one last example. A patient with fear of heights, dreams of falling and impulse to jump. Obviously, there are many issues here to do with heights, falling, jumping, and what will we take? The fear of heights, the desire to jump, the dreams of falling, or maybe even delusion is in a high place. There are literally hundreds of possible rubrics that we can use. I've created a rubric called high and low, which contains all these concepts of up and down, falling, heights, etc. 
There are many concepts, rubrics, ideas that are difficult to find when you need them if we're talking about modern mental symptoms. For instance, low self-esteem, difficult to find in the repertory. It's not necessarily lack of confidence, there's much more to it. Obsessive compulsive behavior, victim, so many possible ideas and rubrics about victim, perfectionism, there's much more to it than fastidiousness. Uh, what about, for instance, washing the hands? Or what about the desire to excel in studies and the many other aspects of perfectionism? Drugs and drugs addicts. Opinion of others, a sensitivity to opinion of others that is very common but difficult to find. Type A people, people who run around, workaholics, work too hard, wear themselves out. Or the issue of failure, is it delusion failure, dreams of failure, fear of failure, sensation of failure, and many other related rubrics, undertake nothing lest he fail, for instance. So I've created rubrics that are needed every day in our modern practice, rubrics that I needed in my practice, and, and really Rafi and me created this repertory because we needed it. So these are the rubrics that we have at the moment and the repertory is developing all the time. Perfectionist, control, divided, double, guilt, obsessive compulsive, failure, ambition, embarrassment, opinion of others, knives and points, home, water, type A people, spiders, money, animals, low self-esteem, victim, carers and helpers, snakes, female hormones, clairvoyance, high and low, trapped, dark, light, drugs, and music. And we continue to develop this repertory all the time according to the rubrics that we find most needed in practice or feedback from our users. Every one of the qualities also comes with a definition so you can understand exactly what the rubric is covering. For example, here is a definition of music suitable for any patient where music is a theme of the case. This quality represents any mental and emotional issues such as fears, delusions, desires, aversions or dreams connected to music in any form. Meaning also that the rubrics concentrate on mental issues so that a physical aggravation from music may not be listed. Now I want to tell you something about my definition of the right rubric, which is the rubric that has the right remedy in it. Now that might seem a bit silly, but nevertheless it's true and it's a good mantra to have in your mind when choosing a rubric because otherwise you might choose a rubric that is too small, too tight, not necessarily accurate to the case, and although it's a very nice and artistic idea, if it doesn't have the right remedy, it's not going to happen. So I always think of that when I choose a rubric, will that rubric have the right remedy? And one of the consequences is that I definitely prefer big and safe rubrics to small and tight ones. I do use the small and tight ones, but I put them on the side to check against and not to eliminate in my main repertorization. So when we created the repertory of mental qualities, the mission was to create a repertory where the right rubric is easy to choose. On the principle of keep it simple, it's quite difficult and complicated to differentiate all the hundreds and thousands of little mental rubrics and here you know you know that patient has something to do with knives and points or you know that patient ha is a victim mentality but without having to nitpick on which rubric exactly to choose you can just take the appropriate rubrics. The second part of the mission was to create a repertory where the best available remedy must be in the chosen rubrics. So to find every possible remedy that has anything to do with that concept, be it victim, or be it money, or be it snake, all inclusive rubrics. And the result of that is that the right rubrics combined 
with a rubric that has to contain the right remedy gives the right result. And this is what we are finding in our practice. This method is based largely on the Bonninghausen method. And Bonninghausen said, use large general rubrics where you are sure the remedy is in the rubric. And in his repertory, he created many such large all-inclusive rubrics, burning pain, lack of vital heat, pains in the bones, etc. He also said that use those rubrics first and only then go to the more characteristic keynotes and particulars. And this would lead to more certain results. To give an analogy, if we're baking a cake, first use large generalized rubrics or ingredients in this case, such as water, flour, butter, sugar, eggs, and chocolate. And only afterwards put on the icing the strange, rare, and peculiar symptoms. So that we create the big picture first that can cover the totality of the remedy, and only then do we go to the peculiar individual differentiation according to the smaller symptoms. So the idea is to work wise, not smart. Be broad first and then be more particular. Start by using large and reliable rubrics you are certain about to repertorize to the main group of remedies that is applicable to that case. Don't repertorize in the beginning with small, unreliable or too many rubrics. Leave that for narrowing down your choice or to check for small remedies later. So this kind of repertory with very small rubrics of 3, 4, 7 or 20 remedies in it is cutting it too fine. So let me give you an example about how to work with the repertory of mental qualities. For instance, if I have a patient that has money issues, that has dreams of snakes, and that has a victim mentality. I don't have to differentiate too much. I just take these three qualities from the QREP, repertory of mental qualities, which contain every one of these ideas within them. And here we see that I have actually three quite large rubrics, 159 remedies, 189 remedies for snakes, for victim 325. And by the way, uh, the new upgrade has many more in each one. But the surprising thing is that by putting these three large rubrics together, I end up with only 44 remedies, which is not a lot. So quite easily and simply, we have boiled down the case to 44 remedies out of three concepts that we are certain about with this patient without cutting too fine. And the other nice thing about it is because these are large rubrics, small remedies pass through that would not pass through if we chose just conventional rubrics, for instance, ozone and Ural H. So you might wonder what is Ural H? It's a small remedy. We wouldn't expect to see it passing through three rubrics and go to the Materia Medica. And here we see that this is approving by Todd Rowe and it is a Stingray. Great. Might fit our case. Now what we can do is take those three concepts that we repertorized and add a conventional rubric such as pains, bones in the night. And then we boil it down only to 13 remedies, which is not a lot to work with. So the idea is in using this repertory is to use it not on its own, but as a complement and together with the large repertories, the repertories that we are usually working with today. This is not a replacement, this is a complement. Another way to go about it is to begin with a conventional repertorization, taking for instance sensation of a lump in the throat, desire for meat and pain in the bones. I'm using large general rubrics over here as well and we see that we boil it down to overall 40 remedies. Not bad. 
But now, by adding one or two of the mental qualities, so for instance, obsessive compulsive disorder or sensitive to opinion of others, we narrow it down to 26 remedies and we don't lose the small remedies because these are large, all-inclusive rubrics. So yeah, we have Agathis Australis and Ginkgo passing through. So you can begin with the generals or the particulars of the person with conventional repertories and only then add the mental symptoms. Now, you might wonder what's in a rubric? How did we create these rubrics? And the answer is very, very carefully. We went through all the modern conventional repertories as well as many of the old ones. And to give you an example, in a simple rubric such as high and low, there are literally hundreds of possible rubrics that are impossible to know and impossible to remember all. So for instance, we have uh, high places aggravates, delusion he was in a high place, delusion on a high building, delusion he is a bird high in the sky, desire high places, this is just one page. He has more, fear of high places, delusion falling into abyss, delusion falling through the bed, delusion he's suddenly falling, delusion he's hanging, and more, fear of falling in the day, in the afternoon, delusion of falling into abyss, he has more, delusion falling downstairs, delusion of high walls and buildings falling upon him, and more. So we did not just copy or combine these rubrics together. We went through every remedy and looked at it and went back to its source to see where it came from, who added it, was it from a case, was it from a proving, was it a speculation, and according to that we decided if it fitted and what degree to what. As I mentioned, we also went through other repertories. Here is an example from Fata Cambodia of high places aggravates, looking upwards at high buildings aggravates, or aggravation from high altitudes. All that went into the mix of the high-low quality, but never automatically, always with a lot of thought, study, and examination. We also combed through the Materia Medicus, searching through old and new remedies to find symptoms that fit, that do not exist in the conventional rubrics. We have used many new provings. Some of them are in the repertories, but many of them are not. Here are some of uh, my provings that we have included, of swan, of damselfly, of Dama Dama, the Bambi, of Olive, of Scorpion, of uh, uh, Jade, etc. But we have used many new provings coming out in journals, on websites, or not even published yet. So here are a few that we've added recently. As you can see, you have many new provings here from various provers. For instance, we have Agathis Australis from Alistair Gray. We've added all his proving. Americium nitricum, that's a proving I did of a radioactive element number 95. Argon, one of the noble gases I did. Many other remedies over here from Alistair, from Todd Rowe, from Misha Norland, and for many other fantastic and amazing provers worldwide. That's just one page of example. Here are some more. Lacovinum, for instance, sheep milk. Here's another one. We have Jupiter's rays even. That's a proving from Russia. We have several provings of Quircus. That's the oak tree. Of new elements such as rhodium. We have pneumobium. We have zirconium. We have hafnium. So we are on the ball all the time, checking out which new provings come out and adding them. Now, in this repertory, we use degrees according to quality and not according to quantity, as in many of the repertories based on Kent, which add according to frequency of the prover or according to frequency of cases or according to how many times it's been verified. 
But here we've looked at how strong the quality is in that particular remedy. So if one remedy is very much uh, afraid of knives, even though it's from one prover, but it was very strong in that prover, we go by the quality. We have bold where the quality is an essential and important part of the remedy. It's its very character. We have third degree, which is not yet ready to be bold, but experimental for it. Most of the remedies go into the second degree in the beginning where, you know, we are quite sure about it, but it doesn't warrant a special place. And then if it's experimental or just from one case or just one prover, we don't want to take it out totally because maybe it will be verified with time and we put it in one experimental for possible additions. And with many of the repertory software programs, you can take that first degree out if you want to. Okay, we have also created family groups. They are usually designated by XX, but that might be different in different software companies that you use. Some might use the asterisk, but the idea is that family groups will also pass through the repertorization. So that, for instance, carbs, argenitums, snakes, gemstones, the lax, or the noble gases will pass through as families. This means that we don't automatically add remedies just because they're in a family that might have the concept. So if cuprum is a strong remedy and obsessive compulsive, it does not automatically mean for us that cuprum arsenicum will also be a remedy for obsessive compulsive. Now here is an example how to use the families in the QREP. I've taken a group of rubrics Animals, carers and helpers, clairvoyance, failure, female hormones, home and house, low self-esteem, snakes and victim. These might be rubrics that are relevant to a case. When we put them all together, we see 13 remedies coming through, among them the milks. Which means that the milk family is passing through all of these rubrics. That's not surprising when we think about it really, because the milks have relationship to Animals, certainly they come from animals, carers and helpers, milk, they are often clairvoyant. They have an issue of failure, female hormones certainly, often relating to home and house, low self-esteem. Many of them have issues with snakes and many with being a victim. If we looked at each remedy individually, they probably wouldn't pass through so many rubrics. But here we see that the milks have this feature and we can now go on to investigate each of the milks individually by restricting our repertorization to the milks only. When we look at the milks only, we see that, for instance, lacphalinum goes through everything. We might not expect that from such a small remedy, maybe lacumanum would. And we see other interesting remedies such as lactalfinum and lactafloratum passing through many of the rubrics. So this is how we use the family feature in the QREP. So the repertory of mental qualities, the QREP, is a repertory that has rubrics that are easy to choose. You don't have to be too precise or too nitpicking in choosing small and maybe inappropriate rubrics. It has rubrics that you can count on. A lot of work has gone into them. It has modern concepts and rubrics you need in everyday practice, rubrics that are suitable to the way people are today. These are rubrics of high quality and an emphasis on accuracy. Every remedy, every entry was checked in the Materia Medica, checked in the repertories, checked in the cases by more than one person, by Rafael, by myself, and by our team, and we compare our results and think very carefully with each entry that we add. The rubrics have all the latest information from all the newest provings and continually updated, but we've only included reliable information, information that we feel can be safely put into a repertory. You might wonder why it's called the repertory of mental qualities. Qualities means individual characteristics of a person, 
qualities means high level of accuracy and quality means remedy degrees according to intensity rather than by frequency. Overall, the idea is that the right rubric and the rubric with the right remedy will give you better results.